Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today we're talking about one of the hottest trends in bass fishing. Today we are talking about strolling for bass. Now there are a lot of things in this category that are close. We could be talking Damiki rigging, a little bit of tight lining, mid strolling, hover strolling, bottom strolling, moping. There are a lot of different things that are really close. But what I want to focus on today is mid strolling or bottom strolling because this is a, by no means a new method of fishing, but it is sweeping bass fishing. And if you've somehow missed it up to this point, it is time to listen. You might have noticed that Tim and I had a dedicated video to hover strolling and mid strolling in the buyer's guide series. You also might have noticed if you've seen our last few fishing videos that a lot of those fish that we're catching are coming on that right there. That's a guppy head to a 3.5 spunk shad. We're also catching them on the 4.5 and even the larger 5.5. Again, this method is not new and we would be remiss if we didn't at least start it off by talking about the Damiki rig. And then let's talk about how you can adapt this to your fishing because we're not doing this for fun. You're not seeing it in fishing video after fishing video after fishing video because we want to be throwing the same bait every day. When the A-Rig kicked off, when the Senko first happened, you know, when these techniques fire off, you can be doing them wrong and you are still catching fish. We just find these little tweaks once in a while. When Tim and I started speed cranking, you're just crushing fish. When those fish fall for a new technique, everything lines up and it is just shooting fish in a barrel. And this is one of those situations. So you're seeing us do it over and over and over. Uh, and the reason is because everywhere we go, we're blasting them on this stuff. So we wanted to take the time to sit down to walk you guys through it. And again, you can do the hover strolling thing. I personally lean away from it. Essentially hover strolling is super, super lightweights. Uh, and you can let that free fall and do a, a swim to bottom, but you can also shake it and work it. But it's with very, very lightweights, very light tackle. For me and my fishing style, mid strolling or bottom strolling, and we'll get to what all that is, allows me to fish much more quickly, cover water, uh, and I'm using it more as a reaction style bait. So it's much more effective in a tournament situation or just out fun fishing where we're just going down the banks fishing, pulling up on sweet spots, quick checking them. You know, it's just a, a day in and day out easier way to stroll. So that's what I'm gonna focus on today. But let's start with the Damiki rig. Then let's talk about how we do this thing. And I'll talk a little bit about why I think it has suddenly become such a thing. Uh, because it's, again, not new, but it seems to just be sweeping everywhere we go right now. So we'll cover that. And then I'll run you through a bunch of the gear because there's a ton of baits. And spoiler alert, the best part of all is you probably own 75% of this stuff already and you're just using it for other things. So you may not even need to buy a single head or a single bait to do this effectively. So let's kick it off with the Damiki rig because the Damiki rig is truly the beginning of this whole concept. You know, the Damiki rig has been winning tournaments for years. Uh, that's that Damiki rig head. We've got that paired up to their three inch armor shad. In cold water, this thing is deadly. And you fish it, typically you fish it vertically or just out in front of the boat. Uh, even before forward-facing sonar kicked off and became the craze, this was super effective on 2D sonar, which means you are looking at your electronics straight down, you'd see a fish down there, you'd drop this down, work it over the fish, and they'd come up and get it. Uh, it's a super, super effective method of fishing. And hands down, this is the staple of this category. This led to all of this, and this is still crazy effective because now we're taking this concept and we're applying it out 
away from the boat or throwing away from the shore, the dock, wherever you might be. This is not something that requires forward facing sonar. This is something that a guy with no electronics standing on shore can do and can catch fish very effectively. Now, if you have modern electronics, absolutely you can see fish sooner. You can throw right to fish, right? No question, but this is not a technique that requires that stuff whatsoever. So the actual concept here, we're taking, I mean, a variety of pintail, straight-tailed type baits, and we're fishing them as if they are a swim bait. And let's start there. So let me pick one of these rods up. Doesn't matter which bait. That spunk shad, perfect example, because in the winter time, uh, say for maybe the last three, four weeks, that three points, the three point five spunk shad has been my deal. Like if I could only have one out of all of them, that's been my jam. I have done so, so well on that thing. But the concept here is very simple. It's a swim bait type body, but there's no paddle tail, right? There's just this little pin tail. That's all there is. And actually it's got a little tiny fork there on the end, although you'd probably never know it. The concept here is that we throw this thing out, we let it go mid strolling, we let it go part way down, bottom strolling, surprise, the bottom. You let it go all the way to the bottom. Now, what I like to do, watch, I'm gonna get this stuck because I'm up here on a mud flat, but I'll pitch this thing out here. I'll let it go to bottom. And then what I like to do personally is I pop it up off the bottom a little bit, and then I just start shaking the rod and reeling. So here we go, just shake, 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 shake. And I reel steady, and that's it. I do that all the way back to the boat. Now, if I'm concerned that maybe I'm getting too high up off the bottom, once in a while I'll stall and just let that thing fall back to bottom. But again, you can do this from shore because there's nothing to it. Throw it out, let it fall either to bottom or just part way down, start shaking, start reeling, all the way back to the boat. That's all there is to it. Now, as you're doing that, the bait is doing something really interesting. It's rocking from side to side. And here's where we get into what I think has happened. Because again, the concept is not new. The Kitek, 3.3, a 2.8, a 4.8, right? The Kitek is hands down the number one swim bait that most of us throw year round. It has exploded over the last, I don't know, five, six, seven, eight years. The Kitek has a very exaggerated swim. The tail, specifically the fat swing impact, the main bait that we all throw. And it is a very effective bait right now. If I tie one on right now, go out here and throw it, I will catch fish. However, I think that in pressured situations, lakes where a lot of guys are fishing, if the bait fish have this sort of a tail kick, and a Kitek has this sort of a tail kick, it's got a lot of drawing power, and I'm picking on a Kitek. We could do this to 50 different swim baits, right? If the bait has a more effect, or a more exaggerated tail kick than the real bait fish, and the fish are taking a beating from the anglers, I think what has happened is the fish are almost beginning to overreact and stay away from that exaggerated movement. Now, again, that may not apply to your lake whatsoever. Maybe there aren't that many guys throwing this stuff, right? You're still throwing all those baits and catching them all day long. This will still work for you too, but this will work even better, in my opinion, in situations where the fish have taken a beating. Because I think those bass are slowly but surely, they adapt, that's how they stay alive. They're slowly but surely staying away from those exaggerated movements and all of a sudden we insert that strolling bait where all it's doing as you're shaking, it's got that little bit of a kick to it, right? Just a little bit of something back there. And then it's got all that body rock. I've also noticed that I do my best damage either on baits that are two-toned. So the top and bottom 
are no well in the sunlight it's hard for you to see but they're noticeably different colors there's one or they're flat sided either one of those two things i think if that bait is two-toned or it's flat sided the motion is more obvious because if you had a bait that's like all pearl right it's just all white uh, and it's round the only thing you even notice is the hook moving back and forth. You can't really see the bait moving back and forth. But if there's a color line, if there's a flat side, then you're noticing that motion. I think the fish are too. Uh, but again, I think it's just a response to all of the baits that we have been throwing in recent years. And I think that these fish uh, have adapted and that has created this all new situation where these are even more effective than they would have been or they previously were, which is fascinating. Now, the coming years will tell. You know, this is one of those funny things where this is budding. If I was going to guess a year from now, we'll do a similar video to this and have 10 different baits. It won't surprise me if all of a sudden we're not talking about pintails. We're talking about different tails, different movements for different situations. That will not surprise me at all. But this is a category that you want to start playing with. So again, throw it out, shake it, and reel it back. I do my best work hands down spinning tackle. This is one of the few techniques where when I throw it on a bait caster, it's exhausting. It's an arm movement. Whereas a spinning rod, it's a little wrist movement. See the difference? You can't work. You just can't do this with a bait caster. It just doesn't work. So you got to do this whole arm motion. It's exhausting. You are way better off, regardless of the rod, regardless of the size of the bait, to throw that thing on an appropriate spinning rod where you can just shake that wrist and reel. Now you can th shake it high. You can shake it to the side, especially if you're over deep water, whatever is most comfortable for you, but just shaking and reeling is all there is to it. Now, there's a lot of different baits, a lot of different heads. I'm sure again, in a year or two, there will be a lot more, uh, but I'm gonna show you some of my favorites just to give you guys a head start. And hopefully you already own a bunch of this stuff. Uh, one thing I'll say is we're throwing almost all on 90 degree heads. The one exception is this past summer going into fall, I was throwing it on our screwed up swim bait head, which is a 30 degree. The reason why is I've been fishing it on a 3 8 ounce head in deeper water, making super long casts. And I think when it's way out there and the goal is just covering water, it's not like I'm doing the forward facing thing. I'm not fishing vertically. I'm talking about launching that thing and just treating it like it's a crankbait or a chatterbait or a spinnerbait, just covering water. I don't think the 90 degree thing matters as much way, way out there. It's all about just getting that rock out of that bait and working it back to the boat. But outside of our screwed up swim bait head, the rest of the heads that I've found to be most effective are all 90 degree line ties. That helps destabilize that thing and it helps it to rock. So the Damiki head, that Dirty Jigs Guppy head, which again, this winter has been my number one hands down. Uh, from VMC, their hybrid swim bait jig head, the 3 16 specifically just seems to be the magic. When I'm going to heavier, so like that 5.5 spunk shed, that bigger profile, I'm throwing that thing a lot of times in like 15 to 25 feet of water, okay? And I want to stay reasonably near bottom in the winter time within, you know, four or five feet of bottom. So I'm going up to a three eighths for that too. But in the winter, I don't need a heavy hook like we have in the screwed up swim bait head. So I've gone to the ultra head and it's got that lockdown keeper. I don't know, hopefully you guys can see that. See that big lead barb? That thing holds so well on these bigger profiles, it just locks them in place. But I'm getting a 3 8 ounce head with a smaller hook, so I'm able to stay with lighter line and get more bites in the cold water. And then the last one, again, we're just flying through this stuff. I'm gonna have all of this 
in the video description for you broken down in the order that we're talking about this. I'll give you the heads, then I'll give you small baits, then I'll give you big baits, okay? Uh, and again, you probably have a lot of it. The last head, this one is a trip. Uh, from Duo Realis, the BR head. They pair that up to their bait they call the BR fish. And I've actually got one that I was throwing the other day here. Check this out. This little setup is a trip. See, it's got fins on the head, 90 degree hook, but fins on the head. And then the bait is round on one side, it's flat on the other, and you can rig it either way. But this is a whole different ball game. So the farther north you are, the colder the water, the more I would lean into a guppy head right now. Uh, the farther south you are, warmer water, you can still play with this right now. That said, come post-spawn, summertime, this is a deal even for the northern guys. So this BR head with this BR fish, where all these other baits are doing the rock, <laughs> this one, when you pop that rod tip, it's darting. It's going like this. It's literally walking the dog, these huge movements underwater. I mean, completely different than any other soft bait there is. If you rig it flat side down, so the opposite of how I have it right now, it's even more exaggerated. I have it turned this way because I was trying to sort of diminish that and just get a little bit of movement out of it in addition to the rock, just to compare it to some of the other things that I've been throwing. But super unique, super effective, very, very different. Uh, now let's talk about those smaller baits, okay? Um, I've got a variety of baits here. Again, if I could only have one, it's that 3.5 Spunk Shad, that Guppy Head, eighth ounce, three sixteenths, quarter ounce. I have not been going past quarter, I've tried, like I've got them laying around the boat. I've, I've gone heavier and I seem to lose the action. I lose some of the effectiveness. Quarter ounce seems to be that sweet spot where I'm getting tons of distance, I'm maintaining depth, and I'm still getting tons of body roll out of that bait. But if I'm shallower at all, I'm going all the way down to that eighth ounce head. This is a one-aught hook. This one is the three-aught hook. See the profile difference? Same bait, different head. Both guppy heads, one aught, three aught. It's totally up to you. Essentially, how big are the fish that you're fishing for? How light a line do you want to throw? I can throw this one with a one aught. I can throw that on five pound fluoro. This guy, I can throw all the way up to like 10 or 12 pound if I want to, and I'm not worried about bending it out. So it's just finding that balance, uh, what's right for you. But you can use either hook size. For the most part, you know, I'm on the Tennessee River. It's not that clear. And that's important too. It's not that clear. Let's circle back to that. But mostly I'm throwing that three-aught hook lately. So we've got that Spunk Shad. Uh, some of these baits we talked about in that buyer's guide already, but again, I'm going to link them for you. From Duo, that Finder Shad. It's got a super cool little tail on it. Uh, of course, that Damiki Armor Shad. From Yamamoto, you got the Scope Shad, which is gonna look like these guys. I've got one rigged on a guppy head, one on just a darter head, 90 degree darter head. I mean, like I said, you probably own a lot of this stuff. Uh, the Depth Sakamoto, which is internationally, that's the bait. And a lot of guys in the US would agree that that's the bait. Uh, the Sakamata is super, super subtle, super soft. It's got a little forky tail on it. And then it's got those two fins similar to that BR head, but it's got the fins built into the bait itself. And that bait's just got fantastic body rock to it. Fantastic. And it is a fish catcher. The only problem with the Sakamata shad, they're very difficult to get. If you can find them, this is the four inch. Here's a five inch, we'll get to that. But if you can find them in a four inch or a five inch, they're definitely worth buying. Again, I focus on the two-toned colors. Uh, and then the last one, the Jackal Rhythm Wag. That Rhythm Wag is a bait that we talk a lot about 
with BFS, bait finesse fishing. Uh, I love rigging that rhythm wag uh, like a super fluke, but a micro version on a little number one hook, catching fish in the summertime that are super uh, cautious and don't want to eat full size baits. But here, taking that same bait, applying it to winter, it's got a great double fork tail, super slim profile, and it's that same thing, walking, body rolling, coming through the water, very, very effective. So you've got a bunch of options and you probably own something in that category. But again, if you're going to gamble, if you wanna try this, you're just going with one. My personal confidence lately has been that 3.5 Spunk Shed. Now on the bigger baits, a lot less options. Well, there's tons of options out there, but I only have three that I've had a bunch of success with. The first is that, again, that five inch Sakamata Shad or bigger. You know, the six inch, the seven inch, those are all very effective. Uh, you can scale this thing up to bigger baits or down to tiny baits. Uh, you just adjust your heads. Number two is going to be that spunk shad. Uh, both Missile Baits and Hog Farmer make the spunk shad. Uh, Missile uh, has a licensing deal from Hog Farmer and they have different colors. So like this is a color that you can only get in the Missile, but like this one. That's a color electric shad. You can only get that guy in the hog farmer. And that, I mean, that's probably, maybe not on a, maybe not on a chatter bait where I use these as a trailer, but for this technique, that's probably my number one color of spunk shad is that electric shad or that guy, that albinos. Oh, man, it's hard to pick favorites, right? But the 4.5 or the 5.5 spunk shad and they go bigger than that too. But I found the 4.5 and the 5.5 both work extremely well. And then the last one from Rapala, that Crush City Freeloader, which is going to be very, very similar to a Spunk Shad, uh, but this is a flat sided bait. So again, that's the one that I was throwing all summer. Uh, heavier hook, putting it on that screw head, 30 degree line time, line tie, and I did so good with that thing. But as we've gone into winter, I wanna downsize everything. I wanna be able to throw it on lighter tackle. So go into that VMC, to that hybrid swim bait jig. I've gone to a much smaller hook. Lighter head, that 3 16 again, seems to be the deal. And I mean, you can see the movement in that tail, right? As I'm bumping that thing. So imagine as you're shaking that rod, that tail's back there waggling, doing its thing and then that body is rolling. You've got a ton of motion, because in your hand, you're like, this makes no sense. But in the water, you're like, okay, I see it. There is motion there. I see the head rocking. And then when you start getting those bites, it just, it just starts clicking for you. Very, very effective. So again, you can go to larger profiles or smaller profiles. Both are going to work great. Dead of winter like this, at least where I'm fishing, I'm leaning towards the smaller profiles. But this is something you wanna to add to your arsenal because it is here to stay. You're gonna hear more and more people talk about strolling, uh, whether they're talking about a hover rig, whether they're talking about a Damiki rig, or whether you actually hear the term mid strolling. This is a major deal that I think is here to stay, at least until the fish take enough of a beating that they wanna shift back into swim baits. Uh, but it is a major deal. Again, I'm throwing it on spinning tackle. I'll link you my favorite combos. Favorite combo for the bigger stuff. Uh, my overall main combo has been a 6.8 medium X Pride. Uh, that's what I've thrown that 3.5 on a ton. Uh, but I've got a bunch of different rods that I've been playing. Basically, every brand of rods tim and i have been trying to find a favorite model so that if a guy likes that brand or that that brand we can tell him yeah try that model try that model right because we're getting a lot of those questions now uh, i think you'll hear a lot more about this from other people you hear a lot more about it from us this coming year uh, but i wanted to give you guys that jump start that little skip ahead of everybody so you can add this to your mix and start trying to play with it. I know we did that buyer's guide, but I know you're seeing it in the fishing videos. And I wanted to get a little more in depth, try and show you exactly how we're doing this thing uh, to consistently catch these fish. If you guys enjoyed the video, 
hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.